Hi, I'm Dr. Lawler, and I'd like to explain to you how virtual and physical Arduinos are, are going to work together. So here I have Tinkercad. It has a, a really impressive little uh, simulated Arduino. So uh, this is an Arduino board. This is a USB uh, connector. And essentially, when you hit Start Simulation, it uh, makes it look like you just plugged in the USB connector. And it's a little hard to see in the video, probably, but uh, my, light is, my on light is on. So here's the exact same thing in the physical world. So this is an Arduino board. Uh, they're, they're fairly cheap. There's a bunch of different kinds, but this is, uh, this is an Arduino Uno. Uh, this is actually a clone, not from uh, the, the Arduino organization. So all that happens when I plug in my USB cable is uh, the, the light turns on, and the Arduino is going to start running the code that we've previously programmed into it. So the code here is telling, telling the LED to turn on and off. So it's, uh, it's a blink program. So if we pull up the code, uh, this code is actually writing uh, output to pin 13. So the setup function runs when you first plug things in, and then the loop function keeps running again and again and again. So pin 13 is just going from high, which turns our LED on, to low, which turns our LED off. And then there's a one second delay between doing each of those things. So if we hook up an LED, to pin 13. So here we, we've got uh, we've got a little simulated LED. So I, I I need to hook the two pins to two different things. And there's uh, it's actually really easy to do this with pin 13 because uh, pin 13 is on the uh, the positive side of the LED, and then uh, there's a ground pin right next to it. So let's try that in the simulation. And uh, yeah, we, we've got a little warning, which is good. Uh, the, the warning is telling us the LED is going to be really bright, maybe bright enough to, to uh, uh, break the LED or the Arduino. If I go to my physical Arduino and I take an LED, so again, just a, a two-pin device. Now, th this is a little bit weird because you need to know which pin is which to figure out which one goes in the ground. Uh, the shorter pin is the one that needs to go into ground. So if I plug that in and then plug the Arduino in, oh, gosh, it, uh, it goes ahead and blinks. And you can see it is really, uh, it's not quite as personally bright as it looks on the camera, but it's, uh, it's pretty bright. Uh, or I can, I can run experiments in the virtual world and have them still work uh, in the physical world. So let's try some of those things. So you have to stop a simulation before you can start uh, uh, plugging and unplugging things. It's one difference between physical reality and, and virtual. I can just plug stuff in real time. So let me just hook pin 13 uh, up to the LED. So you can see my LED is plugged in to pin 13. So if I start the simulation, my LED doesn't blink. And this is a real thing about circuits that uh, essentially like uh, 5 volts wants to come out of pin 13 and wants to light up this LED, but th the, uh, the LED only lights up when current is flowing through it. So you need a way for current to get in and a way for current to get out. If I plug a wire, so this wire is letting uh, uh, current in, this wire is letting current out. So let me try that. And that works fine. That actually works just the same as plugging it in. In fact, uh, with the long uh, legs on this LED, it probably looks a little bit more like the actual uh, uh, LED. So th that's cool. Uh, we do. We have a warning though, and the warning is that uh, there's too much current going through this uh, this LED. So if I start the simulation, that's it blinks up here saying like, "Hey, too much current going through the LED." And th there's a there's a well-known trick to solve this, which is to put a resistor uh, on, a, and it turns out it doesn't actually matter which uh, leg of the LED. Uh, so a resistor is just going to block the flow of current. Not as much current is going to flow through, which is going to protect the LED. So resistance, this is 1k ohm, 1000 ohms, which is cool. So I can just hook that up here. And hopefully uh, the LED should still be bright enough to see. You can see it's dimmer, but it's not so bright that it's going to, you know, hurt your eyes or uh, uh, break the thing. So uh, these are labeled 1K. So this is a thousand ohms, which is a, you know, it's a reasonable uh, resistance for, for doing digital work. So you can see, so th there, there's a resistor. And uh, what I want to do is I want to have the wire basically connected to ground and then going through going through the LED and it has to come in on the the, uh, the 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 negative side of the LED. So you can kind of maybe do this by hand. 
if, if you have only a few components, you can maybe hold things together. Uh, this uh, Let me go ahead and do that, hopefully without destroying everything. Uh, so Ar Arduino is pretty resistant to short circuit, but uh, some, some components, if you accidentally brush a wire against the wrong place, it will just stop working forever. So hopefully I will not demonstrate that part. So I, I'm having to use all my fingers, but if I hold them in the right spot, then I can run current through there. So, so you can see it's, it's hard for me to keep everything lined up to where this is actually going to work. <laughs> But uh, but it, it it does work the same way, right? That if I can if I can basically make an electrical contact in the places I want it and not in the places I don't, then the the current is going to flow the the right way and the circuit's going to do what I want. So t just to demonstrate how some of the things can go wrong, if I have a short circuit, but the LED is not going to light, and it, it, it again LED is not lighting because the current is uh, uh, it is it's it's flowing right past the outside of the LED. Short circuits are a real problem for building real circuits, and especially if you're trying to hold parts together, it's really hard to it, it's easy to have them accidentally not make contact, and then then we're back to uh, back to before where essentially current is coming out of the Arduino, and it's not able to really do any work for us because uh, it, 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 we need to complete the circuit, right? Uh, it need, needs to uh, flow flow in a, a circle. There's a super handy component for making connections uh, in, in sort of a, a, a random, easy to change way called a breadboard. And uh, I, so I'm, I'm going to just, so it's, it's got rows of pins uh, and uh, in, in along the columns, all of these pins are all electrically connected. So if I want to hook up a resistor, to this uh, uh, LED. I can turn my resistor sideways so that I can stick it onto the breadboard. So you can see the resistor goes into one hole and then all of these holes are all connected. So if, if I can just get current basically from Arduino ground to here, it's now going to flow through the resistor and then through the LED and then hopefully I should be able to pull uh, out from there and drop it into uh, into there and I'm just going to change the color of this wire to uh, call it yellow and uh, let's see the, the, there are conventional wire colors here so I'll have a black wire for ground because uh, that's the traditional color the nice part about this is I now have a reliable connection, so things can move around and it doesn't disconnect. So let's just make sure that is going to work. Yeah, it looks like that's uh, our LED is blinking, and it's blinking with a moderate, uh, moderate brightness. Let's try that in the physical world. Okay, so we have our Arduino, we have uh, our resistor, and we have our LED. Now I'm going to add the breadboard, and then I always have to keep track of which side is negative on this LED. So I'm going to plug that in. So there it is. I have it angled back just so you can see wh what's happening. Usually you'd plug it more straight down. So that's, that's what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to now use my resistor. The wires are maybe a little bit longer than in the simulation, but uh, but hopefully you can see that's this. So, and my fingers are getting in the way. Uh, ho hopefully you can see this the same thing. So I've I've plugged into one uh, one row, and now I just need to get ground to here, and I need to get my Arduino pin 13 to there. Now uh, we also have this big bundle of uh, what's called jumper wires. Once they're unbundled. <laughs> so I, I've got a yellow jumper and I've got a black jumper. So my yellow jumper is going to go to pin 13 and to the positive side of my LED. And then the black jumper is going to go to ground and the uh, the negative side of the resistor. So right there. Uh, it's always worth double checking that you plugged everything in correctly before you power it up, especially if it's a, a valuable component. So let's try it. All right, success. So th th the nice part about this is that uh, I can move this around, and it doesn't doesn't really mess mess things up. I can I can reprogram this. So unlike the simulation, you can unplug things as they're running. So here, the LED is not going to light because I have the the pin that would be giving it current is uh, is right here. So uh, basically, I can I can plug things in. Yep, it uh, it works. Tinkercad is totally free, so you can sign up and try this right now. Link is down in the description.